I bought the I bought the camera I have literally on Andrew Tate's recommendation because he said what it was the, the cheapest fuck? best spot. <laughs> 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 he was in an interview that I he watched knows, once and he knows he, a lot. That's yeah, how I bought my wife. <laughs> <laughs> he said this is the cheapest camera with the best quality and he used it for all of his uh, sex slaves that he had in his uh, in his <laughs> thing. And I was like, well, if it's good enough for the sex slaves. Um, okay, so we, you've surely surmised that we are here in Western Kabuki. I'm Wag Nicholson, as always, joined by Caleb June and Alex. Uh, we are joined by the man who taught us to improve society somewhat, and <laughs> Ben Clarkson, who uh, has 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 uh, uh, graced us with the gorgeous trailer for the new season of Blowback. And they are both here to discuss their uh comic book that is available for pre-order called justice warriors how are you doing matthew first matt how are you i'm great thanks for having me that's so good man ben how about you i'm i'm rocking in the free world hell yes <laughs> friend <laughs> so be- beautiful we- we we've had a we've had a pretty busy uh, uh uh news week this week, but I do want to uh, talk to you guys about this comic because you uh, were so gracious as to send it to us, and I um uh, in anticipation I have read about half of it. Caleb, you finished it today, yeah? I did about half an hour before we started. Yeah, fresh Hell thoughts. Yeah. We like first thoughts. thoughts yeah, on Caleb. The yeah, what are your first thoughts? I Caleb? fucking hated it. I'm so <laughs> <laughs> no, it was awesome. Um, I really liked it a lot. It's nice. Um. Gosh, how do I say that? It's nice when something is like upfront about what it is, and that is a, not a very subtle comic, guys. I, I like it. <laughs> so you're saying a, a comic with with justice in it might be like SJW <laughs> content. It might be kind of woke. This is uh this is woke and based at the same time. It's got some based moments. I think uh, I won't spoil it, but uh, you get to see cops kill a lot of a lot of protesters. So if you're into that, <laughs> and you get to see a lot of people kill cops. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you, you guys are both definitely sides. both sides. We uh, <laughs> we, we, we yeah exactly. We yeah. we think that the truth lies in the middle there. <laughs> <laughs> killing cops, killing protesters. Really, who who's who's on the right side here? I think yeah. a little bit. Yeah, definitely the center. Could you summarize? I guess the just it, it, don't no spoilers because we want everybody that's listening to buy it. But s- summarize the plot line that we're we're talking about here. Yeah, Justice Warriors is a dystopian cop satire that takes place in Bubble City, where there's no crime, and outside of it is the uninhabited zone filled by millions of mutants who live in squalor and crime. And the plot of the book is that Swamp Cop gets a, his partner dies. He gets a new partner, Shit, who's like a, a walking poop emoji. He's a poop mutant. <laughs> All the cops are mutants. And uh, they, there starts to be massive social unrest. Um, at first, it's sort of a, it's anti-police and um, has to do with the economy, which is booming and busting at like basically every issue. There's sort of a new economic scheme being introduced. And then from that, a uh, social movement arises, which is sort of um, an armed militia of uh, people who are into the Zodiac signs. And from there, it kind of takes off. And there's uh, a a lot of people are are killed by the end of it and a lot of uh, themes explored. I am. I. I really liked it. I've heard you guys talk in some other podcasts about a lot of the um, a lot of the 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 inspirations for it. And I think that it's it's an interesting thing because there's a bit of a dividing line uh, sort of culturally between people who have an understanding of comic books and people who don't. And I think with what you guys like what you guys made here is is sort of like even more so like a dividing line amongst comic fans between like people who who were really into those 80s like judge dread howard the duck uh uh type stuff um what like this is is this your first time working together guys yeah yeah this is my first cool. comic so, book shit so what made you want to go with this uh that sort of hyper real uh, uh aesthetic of those those sort of 80s absurdist things well, it, it really is like a jump off from the from 80s media fr- from a time when we actually did even engage with some of these social issues, because the book is uh, for the listener. The book is heavily uh, politically satirical. <laughs> uh, it, it engages with it's it's sort of if uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was a political cartoon um, and it in- 
we engage with that aesthetic because it's it it's a comforting aesthetic. It's it's uh, it's an over the top action. You know what you're going to get to a certain extent with it. And we play a lot of the genre tropes. We play into '80s action movies. We play into the the aesthetics of that revelry of violence. But then at the same time, you because you sort of know what you're going to get from it, the genre elements of it, we're able to slide in uh, a lot of contemporary political commentary that maybe you're not going to expect. And that uh, that's like a winning formula that I think we found there. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I, I, I do want to, uh, I do want to ask about a few, just things that I noticed. But the thing that stood out to me the most, having read the first three sort of issues of it, um, uh, the most was the mayor because, to me, the mayor character is kind of like four or five different guys at once, and I think you guys did a really good job, especially you know making a comic in twenty twenty three like to not make him such an obvious allegory for one politician or another. Um, what can, can you guys talk to me about the mayor a little bit? Tell me a little bit about the pop star mayor. Well, I wanted to make him orange, but then <laughs> not allowed. Two, two on the nose, maybe. A little yes. two, yeah. So we, the, we were going to call I him mean, he, the orange bad man. <laughs> the Cheeto. <laughs> Stage name, the Cheeto. Yeah. Uh, the Cheeto in chief. I call but Mango yeah, Mussolini. You know, <laughs> got his ass. I should yeah, say, yeah, but Frank Frank Miller did that with Ronald Reagan, and now he's a Nazi. So you got to think about your future. <laughs> with these kind of things. <laughs> you know, Ben uh, Ben uh, came to me with these characters. He designed the world originally oh, okay. before we we got together, and we got together in the summer of 2020, which you might remember. Uh, and just through the end, I was really drunk, actually, yeah. so I don't. <laughs> uh, <you> know. <laughs> That's probably a, a good decision. Definitely not a great time. <laughs> there were, for most there were a lot of things to be drunk about. Um, <laughs> but so you know, I mean, I'm I'm coming from the world of political cartoons where I was actually drawing Trump all the time, and you know, there was famously a lot of things to uh, cartoon about and criticize Trump about. But it got it got really tedious for me as a creator. Like I quit political cartooning in 2021 after 18 years because I was in part. Uh, tired, tired of doing extremely direct, uh, on the nose stuff and, and definitely tired of Trump. Um, you know, Ben, Ben can speak to, uh, how he envisions the prince though, because he came up with him before we were together. And I think he has a good, uh, he can articulate it better than me. Yeah. It, it, I didn't want to make a sh- take shots at anything specific because the second you get into like specific with sci-fi or a satire or allegory you um you l- you lose the audience that you could maybe convert you could mm, maybe yeah. <laughs> catch them with a laugh that they didn't think that they were going to laugh at so i like to when i was constructing like the initial scaffolding before Matt came in and helped me flesh out the world. And we built the specific stories to introduce you to the world and everything. Cause all, it all started as like a schizophrenics, crazy uh, journal uh, of like, Oh, I'm going to kill the president. And Matt's looking through and it's like <laughs> written backwards. And it's like, Oh, how do you, how do you interpret this madman's uh, bullshit that he's put together? Um, but uh, a lot of it is uh, I wanted to satirize the system, but not like the specifics. Because we get in American politics, you get so fucking hyper specific <laughs> about like uh, Little Rhonda and uh, these specific oh, he's characters. Got a Trump. That's, pretty good Trump. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the limit of my impressions. <laughs> Little Rhonda, uh, she's not very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, but once you get specific, you lose. Uh, the ability to reach an audience, I think. Uh, and you, you um, like, I remember when Don't Look Up came out, people oh, got oh, mad yeah. that Meryl Streep was too coded <laughs> to Trump. Uh, and I was like, you can avoid all this. Just make him a, a seven foot tall 
a pop star with perfect abs, a totally triangular nose, and make him literally Prince, the artist <laughs> formerly known as Prince. Yes, <laughs> with Elvis's so, hair. So can I? So can I ask a very specific and odd question? Um, yes. The Fifth Element. Uh, Chris Tucker's character was originally supposed to be played by Prince. And this really? character yes <laughs> that's my this fan character. casting for justice warriors right there. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i was gonna ask was this a nod to because he looks like chris tucker's character from fifth element yeah yeah there's a big fifth element influence on justice yeah warriors. um yeah so i was wondering if that was a specific nod to the almost casting of having prince play chris tucker's character <laughs> no i didn't know that but like i must have like <laughs> connected with the cosmic singularity to <laughs> That's, that's beautiful. That's genuinely beautiful. Um, yeah, I, I think that, uh, you know, making him like a self-obsessed pop star and putting him in this position of like everything anybody says to him of any importance, he relates it back to, do you like me or not? I think it is. <laughs> 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 like bread prices are too high and he's like, so track four on the album, did you think? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's great. It's kind of like if if it's kind of like a if a like pre Nazi Kanye were, had become president. Oh my god! <laughs> yes, pre Nazi. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, he's not. You know, he's not explicit. Wait, wait <laughs> for Ka- series two. Yeah. Yeah. Kanye is like not a Nazi apparently anymore, right? Like he's like, <laughs> yeah. He, he watched he's Twenty One like Jump Street and it cured him from <laughs> anti semitism. He walked. He walked it back. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then Jonah Hill was canceled. <laughs> That's what happens. Uh, so so elon removed him from twitter for being a nazi and now elon won't let him back on because he's not a nazi anymore uh it's the cruel thing uh, that he must endure. i do want to say one more thing about the uh the too, anti-Semitic, guy. too anti-semitic now not <laughs> semitic enough <laughs> <laughs> the um the the singular stroke of genius on page 44 of um having his nose bisect two panels going down uh i do just want to shout out whichever one of you had that thought yeah. uh it's a beautiful little piece of comics art that i i genuinely appreciated a lot yeah i try to break the page with his nose as often as i can as far as the um the sort of social f- fabric of the, the 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 story that you guys made where social media becomes like a a way to adjudicate like social problems in which people like the p- chief of police is worried about her mentions and stuff um what <laughs> the, like how would you describe the worldview that you guys are trying to to sort of speak to there uh so matt i can get like really heady on this yeah i would love I'll for try you not too. to no no, no that's please, why i'm asking please get, the please yeah, get really heady uh so i've been i uh, like because <laughs> i can go uh <laughs> uh i'll uh, sometimes when i'm like too high on my own supply <laughs> i'll start talking to matt about like object oriented ontology and how <laughs> capital has <laughs> desires and how like systems and physical organizations of people physical organizations of social groups have their own desires and so that's something we wanted to have come out as actually the main thrust like the system like the bubble itself has uh motivations the city itself has motivations. It, that was a, a central idea to how we went about so writing the book. That is very that's very heavily felt even in the first issue, where the reputation of the Dome City not having any crime becomes like a central factor for everybody's life in the the Dome City that they aren't able to function uh uh without the knowledge that they are maintaining a perfect society that that is yeah. it's it's somehow hangs over every time they go out to eat every time they discuss economics uh it it's a it's a it's a thing very much felt i i and i when you were saying that i thought of the um the scene where the blobfish uh 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 cop goes into the the crowd um 
I kept on. I read it as officer brutality, which I think was on purpose. But um, <laughs> Brunalty. 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 Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Close enough. Uh, yeah. When he faces off against the mob and you see that he has this sort of singular vision of his uh, of what he thinks the mob is and, and wants to, like, kill them all. Um, and they it was hard to, like parse exactly what everybody was doing and, and like in the chaos of those few panels and i think that that really helped f- not so much feel like the like there were necessarily like good things good guys and bad guys on either side like obviously oh, yeah. the officer brutality is like a bloodthirsty maniac but also like yeah. th- th- those protesters were pretty misguided in, in trying to get what they wanted. And and like when you say that like groups have this 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 group think that that is centered around like objects, what do you what what do you mean by that? Like how do you how do you define that? It's, it's so uh it come it there's like a critique of ideology in there of like the this the inhabit the interior inhabitants of the city. So they're in the book for the listener there's a giant mega city under a dome that we call bubble city and bubble city is perfect and it has no crime and everyone is super wealthy and uh, completely equal. The only problem is this mega slum stretching to the horizon that's popped up around the city uh, where the majority of inhabitants live uh, called the uninhabited zone. And so there's like a disavowal here, right? Like the people in the bubble disavow the fact that the us the uz is connected to them in any way shape or form oh my god you Uh, called it the us i didn't even get it yeah Yeah. so there's like a (laughs) land of oz uh well it's also us like it's it's yeah like yeah that's awesome uh there's like and then like you know the book has little winks and nods in its structure to uh the original wizard of odds too so uh oh it's a golden you know, city and yeah 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 there's golden city the royal road like political allegory economic allegory but all turned on its head and done uh with lots of blood like robocop if the listener uh, is normal and doesn't know the original <laughs> wizard of oz was an allegory for switching off of the gold standard which is why it's called yeah. the wizard of oz because it's ounces in the original story she has silver slippers um and they go to the emerald city because it's green like the greenbacks and then it turns out that the city is not actually green they're just all wearing green goggles to make it look green so as if to say that the appearance of our money may be green but it is actually worthless yeah it's written by a crazed <laughs> crank <laughs> <laughs> yes like our like our very libertarian yeah, yeah, yeah. Setting. <laughs> the, the imf does not want you to know the truth about the wizard of oz <laughs> Uh, yeah, so there's there, every sort of social group in the book um, is working towards some sort of end, but they don't even necessarily, they're not individually even capable of articulating what their ends are. And we we highlight that with a, a certain, um, a gang, a Libra gang, which has, uh, which is being manipulated somehow. Uh, but the p- group that is manipulating the Libra gang is using online astrology content to <laughs> manipulate the uh, violent uh, gang to do its whim. It so there's be, this idea yeah, that there's like these machines, this system running, and we're acting it out and we're doing things for the machine, but we don't even know that we're doing it. And we wanted to play that in and like, how does crime interact with that how does policing interact with that how does the economy interact with these ideas yeah, yeah the libra gang is sort of like if if everyone on uh, instagram who shares like mental health memes was suddenly <laughs> militarized into a maoist <laughs> <laughs> and dedicated to eliminating certain other signs uh, yeah from being exactly. the wrong side. Post, well, posting <laughs> the posting the blm black squares would was like a mk ultra code yeah, yeah. <laughs> well you know uh, to go Back to the social media question, we uh, and how much of a, uh, a point it is in the throughout the entire world. I mean, it's specific to the plot, but it's even it's just everybody is constantly online. The prince is worried about his streams. The 
police chief <laughs> is worried about her mentions. The head uh, of the Libra gang, actually, it's on her cri- her rap list or whatever. That's one of her crimes is being in the chief's mentions. I thought that was <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the that's incredible. It's one and, of the steep one of the steepest charges, in fact. Yeah, <laughs> Matt, <laughs> life in prison. The, loved it. at the end of three, Matt. Um, you 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 did the the little interstitial thing where a like teenager gets black bagged and disappeared for dunking on the chief of police. Yeah. Ratioing is ratioing is gonna be like a death sentence, I, yeah. I assume. Yeah. Just you know, to the black site. Um <laughs> yeah, I loved I love doing those little strips that are sort of like uh give give little insights into how the world building uh, background of the world the world operates. So but we we wrote this, we started writing this in 2020 and we wrote and drew it in 2021. Which I would say that uh, you know up to this point is probably the most online time uh, mm-hmm. in, hu- in human history, mm-hmm. and a lot it really reflects that too. Uh, yeah, and yes. a lot of uh, a lot of things we were sort of processing um, were, were put into the comic. I mean, everybody was online and angry, and you know, developing all of these weird, uh, you know, niche uh, sub um, uh, unhinged. Uh, cliques and stuff so like you know the, some of the most obvious is um sort of QAnon and anti-vax stuff which plays a little bit into the the libra gang and you know they talk a lot about um they talk in sort of uh social they use some like like social justice and online language and like i said sort of like the mental health memes and like the way certain people talk about this stuff online and then also it was influenced by actual people who kind of or get a little too into the zodiac stuff which you probably see on instagram or whatever and then and weird trends that were happening on tiktok like uh you know teenage girls developing um t- temporarily developing tourettes from like watching tourettes influencers and stuff because everybody mm-hmm. i think was just sort of uh doom scrolling for months on end and it really affected them can you speak yeah, I, went to Tourette's. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. people people I, I were catching like... Tourette's on instagram <laughs> yeah i saw TikTok. some of that shit the, that like that was like a big thing for a while and it was like yeah. a it became like a feud between like actual Tourette's influencers and then and they, they would be like analyzing these these people that would claim to have caught Tourette's it was yeah. very strange that very is strange. a nightmare. Uh, that is a uh, genuine whack. nightmare. <laughs> it's so strange. Yeah. Whack, if, if, if you didn't develop Tourette's in 2021, man, you weren't living. <laughs> <laughs> That's well. That, that is. Like I was the, a like, multiple personality person. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Ah, yeah. I, I feel it, like for this comic though, I feel like 2020, 2021 is probably like the best period to write and create this in. Because yeah. it was like the most amped up period. Like, I imagine like you guys probably started it right around the the BLM protests, if I had to guess, the conception of this. We we were talking, like the idea for the comic has been batting around in my schizophrenic journals for about 10 <laughs> years. Okay. Uh, it's just that like this specific story, because like we have a world, like this whole world, uh, Matt and I talk all the time about how the world is the main character of Justice Warriors. Mm-hmm. Like we really uh, spend a lot of time and a lot of care to flesh out the world, to make the the jokes of the world um, uh, cohesive and uh, take them seriously and build on them. Uh, and this is the story that came out when we tried to introduce uh, an audience to this world that we had. So it makes sense that like, it's a hysterical book about being (laughs) online too much. So you could just like with some of those other like eighties comics, you could see in a uh, volume two, you guys could see sort of a dramatic tonal shift, a dramatic. Oh, absolutely. Shift. If we were to do one, which is pretty much, uh, greenlit, but we can't say that it's because <laughs> of PR things and like really. You heard it here first. Crap. No, no. <laughs> uh, uh, it, it, we would do like probably it, the first one is sort of like a bad boys genre movie. Mm. You could do a um, uh, political thriller. You for could instance. do, uh, for instance, hypothetically, <laughs> uh, <laughs> or another one you can do uh, like a dystopian future sports movie, uh, yes. which there are many examples of. Or oh, like Real Steel or Death Race 2000, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 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 
we we have ideas to sort of touch on each aspect of society and in, in further volumes. So you know how you've seen sort of how the economy works, how the police works. If, you know, imagine we want to write how elections work, how sports work, how the dr- <laughs> how the drug trade works, um, how you know we haven't got into this, but there's possibly uh, other cities in this world. Actually, no, there are, because we mentioned starfish cities where the uh, starfish terrorists come from. So other, you know, there's a lot of world building that we intend. And, and Will Menneker had a fucking field day with your intro with the name oh, of yeah. the cities. <laughs> <laughs> I texted, I texted, uh, I am a big comics guy um, and I have been for about 10 oh, nice. years. And so when I saw Ramada Jr. I was like, come the fuck on. <laughs> 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 no offense to Will. It's funny. It's just very, like, very, very uh, uh, sort of either you're going to understand what he is saying or you will not. Um, I am and- one of the ones that will not, personally. <laughs> I, I do not. Uh, does John not Robita, register. John Robita Jr. is a legendary comics artist and the son of a legendary comics artist uh, for Marvel. Well, you don't need to know that to enjoy it. One thing no, that you can no. still get behind is there is a a very good uh, depiction of one of the board apes getting beaten. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Yes, there's board apes. It's gonna be yeah. my Hell fucking yeah. phone background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of Easter eggs throughout the book. There's uh, there's uh, it's a love letter too to all of that '80s media that was brought up at the beginning, like. Uh, and also underground comics. There's like uh, Robert Crumb characters stuck in the sides. There's oh, really? Daniel Klaus characters stuck in the sides. Eon Flux is in there. Uh, the I major did see that. from I Ghost that in one. the Shell. Uh, so just like there's these massive crowd scenes where hundreds of characters uh, from other media are like piled in. There's a guy who has like a Duchamp arm mutt, a fountain for a head. Uh, <laughs> So it's it is like visual anarchy at times, and, and which is sort of thematically uh, important in the book of like that visual anarchy being disciplined and crushed, so you can have like your clean and nice uh, condo market. Yeah, <laughs> and it uh, takes Ben countless hours to draw all this. Oh, you know, it's brutal! Like, <laughs> every single, every single mutant out. is a different species and. <laughs> I, did you do um, any like? Uh, did you do any doubles? Were there any like? Uh, did you try to make every single one as unique as possible? Oh yeah, I never. Um, I actually struggle to stay on model when I'm drawing. Oh characters. really? <laughs> yeah, I'm like ah. Well, he can just he, his eye patch. It doesn't matter which side it's on. <laughs> <laughs> He's a hallucination. So He's a hallucination. <laughs> it flips and flops depending on which panel you're looking at. <laughs> Does it really? I didn't notice. Yeah, that's my little in joke to myself. There's a character has a, an eye patch, and it's never consistent. Where I like, I like to think it's that swamp can't remember which eye he has yeah. a patch on. <laughs> he's, he's doing it because it's cool. It has no, yeah. yeah, his eyes are fine. Yeah, it's a vanity patch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just yeah. One must imagine he did not need the eye patch. <laughs> um, okay, so. I did want to sort of talk a little bit about the <clears throat> the the plot structure and like where you guys had ideas for because it's basically a detective mystery type of thing. Like if you're if you're viewing the culture, um, th- uh, the culture of 2021 through the lens of. Um, uh, uh, I keep I I know ju- there's more than just Judge Dredd, but if you're just saying like <laughs> yeah. uh, ju- like if you're viewing 2021 culture through Judge Dredd, like what drew you guys to the the sort of m- detective murder mystery type of vibe for for the the volume one? It's it's a great format. Yes, uh, we have. Uh, gone back from because we've done a lot of podcasts talking about the book and on some of these we've gone back and uh, looked at other dystopian cop fiction within this genre that we're in and we realize that it's a, really a staple of the genre is the investigation the uh, sure. Soylent Green is a great example uh, the investigation in this genre is the is revelation right like you. The joke of the book is like you're being 
taken through this insane world. But every time you learn something more about this world, you're like, ha, that's just like the world I live in. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, and so that there is that process of revelation for the reader of like, oh, this mm. thing, this aspect, these things are all tied together. And you can get that feeling of revelation through the process of an investigation. And so uh, other media have done it. Uh, I was, I think we stumbled on it by just trying to, to reference police procedurals. Yes. Uh, that was my intention with trying to figure out the form and the, the, the structure, but it, uh, it turns out that this is a very common way of doing sure. this story. I mean, I think it's, it's, um, I mean, you know, there's a lot of cop stuff, copaganda, also Westerns are like this and it's. I think it's for a reason, you know, beyond just uh, propaganda, which is that, you know, narratively, it's very easy to put a, a lawman in. They can use violence. They can go places. They can interview people. You can construct a story a lot easier than if you just have a, a random person, you know, get interested in s solving something or toppling something. Although there's plenty of uh, movies that are about that as well. And we did want to do something from the perspective of the police, which is to say from, you know, the system and show the mayor and the cops as the main characters and, but have it not be uh, reaffirming of them. And so it's, it's not, I, I don't think I would majorly spoil justice warriors by saying, you know, it is not ultimately about um, the good guys uh, winning over the bad cops. Uh, it's a lot, a lot more complicated than that. And like you said before, the the social movement that rises up has a lot of problems of its own. But it's also about the system of Bubble City uh, determining the outcome. You know, like the, and the, which is which is I think something that me and Ben kind of agreed with philosophically is that like you know the material world really sets up the guardrails for what you can what you can accomplish i mean i think that's what we saw in 2020 too with uh more more people in the street than i believe have ever been in the street for one single thing it's very difficult to accomplish much of anything uh you know concretely and legally at the national level <laughs> because it is not designed to let you do that so you know um without it being uh, a total downer. Uh, I think it's a it's a it's a fun it's a very fun book and fun and funny. But it is it's ultimately not about like the good guys uh, winning and then you know the police and Bubble City are no more. No, it's mm. not a power fantasy. It's uh, it's very realistic about power, and it's sort of an exploration of like where does social power come from and how does it work? Uh, yeah. It's good time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm sure it very, I mean, we, we were all around during 2020, 2021. It like, yeah, you were right. Everyone was in the street. I mean, at least in my lifetime, I'm probably the youngest person here. Um, it was like the first major national protest I saw while like an adult. And for me, like I wasn't really around with what was it, Occupy Wall Street. So for me, seeing all that, I was like, oh, you know, like maybe things can actually change. Like that's how it felt with everyone in the street. But then it just fizzled. Yeah. James fizzled. Franco first time meme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know, it kind exactly. Of was, kind well, of I remember uh, this will age me a little bit. I don't know how old everybody is, but yeah, I was uh, I was in the streets for the Iraq War protests, and those were the biggest protests you know ever in the world at the time. And hmm. of course, I think there was a lot less. Um, I mean, social media wasn't around, and even there wasn't even like mainstream liberal media like MSNBC <laughs> and shit now. Like it, there was practically nothing. And uh, so I guess we didn't have the illusion that we were going to change it. This is, for <laughs> yeah, that's a theme that we've talked a lot about uh, is the indescribably bleak feeling of being on the left in the mid 2000s during the Iraq war. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it was, it was bad. It was, uh, you felt was like bad. there was, you like there, like you would, 
be in trouble if you were just like, maybe we shouldn't have invaded this sovereign nation. <laughs> so it's like controversial like, to say, yeah, maybe we shouldn't uh, glass the Middle East. If people were looking at you side eyes, depending on where you lived. <laughs> and, and, you know, I think as, as a leftist, I have like, it is ultimately about, you know, people coming over to our side and we have to welcome them um, because we need uh, numbers and all that. But mm-hmm. I am kind of like, I'm still a little mad about the Iraq war because at one time it was like 90% of the country supported it. And uh, everybody walks around now like they like they opposed it. Like yeah, it like yeah. <laughs> we <laughs> few 10%. Like, no, no. There's a you don't lot of 10%. To, Holy you don't shit. You get to lie Every, about this. Everyone uh, above the age of 30 <laughs> yes. just happened to not think the Iraq war was good. I'm going to okay, need to see your papers. And by your papers, I mean your Bush lied, people died t shirt. <laughs> yeah. I, I made anti Bush. I had a, a Bush shirt that said, uh, I made it. You know, I had a Bush's face on it and said, I'm proud of this. Too illegit to quit. That <laughs> <laughs> was like that was probably peak activism in in two thousand two. You peak guys want to check out the, uh, my live journal on the Internet Archive? <laughs> George Bush. I'll, I'll share. Uh, Amazing. Peak activism was the opening scene in Harold and Kumar go to White Castle, <laughs> where uh, uh, Kumar is wearing a shirt that says, I love Bush, the pussy, not the president. Um, <laughs> nice. That was the, that was, I was 12, I was like early teenage, 12, 13 years old. Um, and I remember being a, a hyper Warhawk lib who got mad at Patton Oswalt <laughs> in, in a comedy special for saying that he hates Bush and hates the war. And oh, like, you my have to God. support the troops, you piece what a, of shit. What a bleak time that must have <laughs> It was have been. really Holy dark. Shit. It was really dark. Oh were my you God. like, what, were you wearing your, uh, your, your little uh, purple heart band-aid to make fun of John <laughs> Kerry? <laughs> <laughs> I was wearing my John Stewart for president shirt, and I was nice. <laughs> uh, yeah. a little a little memory lane for for the old heads out there. Um, yeah, I watched uh, Roger uh, Robert Rodriguez as the faculty the other day, and John Stewart gets stabbed in the eye with a cocaine <laughs> substitute, and I was like, yeah. Good. He also tries to fuck a student as a teacher in that movie. Uh, he gets yeah. what he deserves. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> As he has one now, thing, his, his irrelevance. He also just that. One thing I'm learning is it's pretty much anything that we do during any protest, no matter the era, is it'll, there's a lot of cringe if you just look back at, at it oh, for a little yeah. bit. Yeah, I mean, even yeah. when like by the time 2021 rolled around, I was like, nobody's blown up a police station. Nothing like, only, or really, only one police station's gotten burned down. This is not yeah. enough. We need and, to- and America proved it though. America, yeah. that, that there was yeah. that poll. America loved that shit. But then yeah. it just never happened again. No, yeah. no, no. They were I like, going. I- I, you know, that's like the best poll I've ever seen. Like, I, like it was like sixty percent. Like, yeah, yeah, we we rock. We we're rocking with this burnt down police station. Can I've we run the anything. police station for office? <laughs> More popular than Biden. Yeah. So I did want to ask because because you guys have talked so much about like how your characters are inhabiting the space and how Bodies the space spaces, functions. Yeah. Um, I did want to. A- <laughs> I did want to ask. I and I like I said I haven't finished it so I don't know but it, is there an explanation of like why do they all look different like what is their physicality what is officer <laughs> shit I mean he's obviously a piece of shit but does he have like a liver these does are all great questions kid- and kidneys? I no, they are not addressed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think the shit would kind of because remember he gets he gets shot up and you find out a little bit about his his anatomy in that in that scene I'll, I'll leave it <laughs> yeah I would <laughs> say you know. Shit is highly malleable. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would say that too. Well, you know, as, I, so, I, as I someone who yet. is uh, currently uh, lifting turds out of a little uh, kid potty. Oh, I'm uh, with looking a, forward oh, to it. Boy. <laughs> and uh, often feeling their. Uh, I'm getting into weird territory here. This shit is <laughs> shit is malleable. Okay, I, have a, I, I, yeah. I, I pick up shit every day. Are, what are you <laughs> half German, Matt? <laughs> um, but to uh, address the, the substance of the question, um, we haven't got into it enough because there's just millions and millions of mutants, and they can be cartoons and walking whatever a walking cabbage with eyes uh but i do we ben and i have talked about this there's sort of uh an array of you know there's mutant species so i think there's other shit mutants for instance and 
Um, I think they they probably even have uh, they have so, you know social hierarchies within within the uninhabited zone because like the shit mm-hmm. shit is kind of looked down on because he stinks and he's a sh- <laughs> he's a shit. Yeah. Mute, it feels you know? that way, yeah. But it, all of it's just like a stand-in yeah. for deeply racist tribal societies that can't reconcile uh, their people can't reconcile their what unites them rather than what separates them and uh, animosity and yes. hatred run amok. Yeah. Like, yes, useless absolutely. animosity in the case of like the Libra gang and things. Yeah. Um, I, I, I also wanted to ask about the, because in this one, this is a like specifically political, like elect, almost like an electoral politics. Like what, when we say politics in like mixed company, <laughs> people who watch CNN or whatever, that is basically what this is about. Elections, the police, the people and things like that. But we don't see a lot of like a corporate superstructure. So when you talk about like how police and general agreement and society and things control us, we don't see how like bleat. I mean, I don't know if it happens later, but the Twitter, yeah. the Twitter stand in and the story, how that necessarily is a money making operation that is benefiting off of the misery that they're creating and how like their phones and these different sort of other structures corporate structures and and, and monetary structures outside of the price of bread um how that really functions is that something you guys are like looking to get into or like what what it, it, it's it felt like a bit of an omission not seeing that like corporate superstructure on top of the uh, it's thing, it's so sort of in there. There's there's definitely uh, talk in the book about the collusion with the military industrial complex to produce a series of helicopters to do literal helicopter drops yes, 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 of yes. money uh, on the population. <laughs> Little economics <laughs> fun for you. Uh, and, and then also there is there is like a it, it that the. The other example really gets into the spoiler territory where you start seeing um, like the social media network's okay. perspective where it actually articulates its perspective. Oh, OK. It, yeah, it is. In so there it is in because there. we really are trying to get into the idea that there is a system and the system has desires and the system has its agenda. And we might think we're characters in our lives, but we are being manipulated. We are flowing on a river. We're like motes of dust on a stream, blah, 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 <laughs> poetry bullshit uh, that, that's flowing downhill. Like we're, we're looking for opportunities. We're looking for money and we can Mike be- Mike is all uh, weird. I'm trying to fix it. Okay. Uh, and we can be pulled in certain directions to do certain things. Uh, by those systems and and we try to do like a holistic look at it uh, so do you do, do you think that this could radicalize your your typical suburbanite wine drinking msnbc viewing uh like mother is this do you think it has that potential i don't know if that's the intention <laughs> of the is that, work is that not it okay so you're, you're not you're not trying to <laughs> <laughs> it could it could radicalize okay. her yeah. little lib son though i think <laughs> okay, if her, okay. if her lib like son i don't read. think that the purpose of art is to inform your political opinions mm-hmm. but I, something that i did read recently that was slightly hopeful that i was like oh maybe that maybe i can have some hope is that um, laughter apparently is this incredibly potent psychological tool. When you're trying to get someone to believe something else, uh, if you can make someone laugh, then it, it has a psychological effect of like, oh, you you tricked me, you got me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's little... that's so real. I mean, and I was always like, like growing up, I was like always kind of like on the left, I suppose. But I got into The Daily Show, um, like as a 16 year old. And that kind of led me in a weird way that kind of led me like to more left ish, like so left or humor. John Stewart for president hosts. On yeah. The yeah. I, <laughs> a little low key. Low I'm, key. I'm actually uh, I'm running for president on a platform of laughter and mirth. <laughs> you have my I vote. believe we need more of it as a society. I think we need oh, another red yeah. and rally can... to restore sanity. Is what yes. we need. That we need to bring John Stewart back for that. Man. Yeah, you need you need oh. like a pan flute and little horns. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh you'd be great. <laughs> 
Caleb, did you know I went to the rally to restore sanity and or fear? Did you really? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> I was at home laughing at your dumb ass. I was already, yeah, I because, was like, Because they damn. said it was a free fucking festival and they put a bunch of fucking games <laughs> and you couldn't see fucking anything. And then. That's a metaphor for a few things. <laughs> and then. Because they had, they didn't have enough porta potties inside. So they had to gate it off. So the Amazing. people were inside could get to the porta potties. But I got to hear, I got to hear. Here, didn't see it. Stephen Colbert introduced Ozzy Osbourne and he came out and played Crazy Train. And then Cat Stevens came out and played Peace Train over it. And I didn't get to see it. I didn't know that happened. That kicks so much ass. That's yes. Awesome. I thought that was John Stewart using traffic. And Kid as a Rock was the Kid Rock like, was there. Oh, you go, I go. You're a conservative. I'm a Democrat. You know, we're fine. Yeah, that wasn't. <laughs> that wasn't funny to a motherfucker who drove four hours to Washington D.C. I can tell you that. Much. <laughs> That's kind of, uh, I, you know, I, I know you were a kid probably when that happened, but that's just what you get. I, yeah. I, there like, could be a whole docu series on that one event. I feel like there's so much to say a about calamity. it. A calamity. I couldn't. I couldn't watch anything about it because I was so fucking pissed off. Well, yeah. I'm still you're obviously the, you're not the over kind it. of person who needs to do a sit down interview for like the Netflix show, like. About people that attended it, like a Woodstock '99. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was fire fested. Yeah, I was so fire fested culturally by, for us. By Comedy Central. Um, can I ask you guys yeah. about a specific character? I know where I'm trying. I'll let you dictate how much you Please. want to talk about it because we're trying to avoid spoilers, obviously. But no, it's the character fine. that I, I think I liked a lot because you, I, you brought up a little bit with the helicopter drops, but like the the fortune teller. Uh, oh, yeah. tell me where where the idea for that came from. Uh, describe the character maybe as much as you want to for our listeners and then maybe where that came from what you guys are trying to get across there where did that well, come from well it came from we developed the libra gang and you know they're obsessed with zodiac and this had sort of come out of uh it, you know which is related to tarot and so uh, i don't know if it you know ben and i talked about ideas so i don't know exactly who who thought of it but we thought of it would be great in this like upside down world to have a, a materialist card reader, essentially <laughs> who does uh, card readings for people and um, interprets events in their lives th through a materialist lens. Uh, you know, that's what Zodiac is or tarot reading is uh, not doing in materialism, but you know, it's, it's creating a story to explain why things happen to you. And, we wanted sort of one person in the world, uh, in this world, to sort of have uh, politics that resembled ours, and then be a completely marginalized kook. <laughs> yeah, her her shop, the dialectical fortunes and <laughs> Lacanian analysis. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I love I was I was reading that and I loved it and then right up until the end where like it, she refuses the money uh refuses payment and then um get I'll, we could mild spoiler hopefully it doesn't I've posted guys, but, the the, the uh, panels okay. yeah so yeah she refuses uh. payment and then is immediately crushed by a pallet of money that drops from the <laughs> helicopters which I thought was just very very good again not a not a subtle comic but it was very funny <laughs> while reading the fortune of the we sh uh yet <laughs> yeah. yet you participate in society yeah. guy yeah. <laughs> also a nice little easter egg that I love yeah. how did that feel doing that specifically was that like uh yeah Killing how, how that does guy. it feel to kill the guy <laughs> good because you know at the time especially it, it, it's it's gone through so many ups and downs of, of over the years of like people were re t redoing the meme the other day yeah, They're like, yeah. oh society has improved a little we talked bit. about it right before yeah, you guys we got were just out. talking about that yeah, yeah we saw that shit and yeah. i'm like one you have to be like insane to think anything has gotten better so yeah. like why are you having this discussion but every time i see it i'm like hey, i know that guy yeah, I, I mean, you know, it's been a weird, it's like, you know, I don't have any control over it. So there's, there's people who are, uh, you know, people who are mad that it's too popular and mad that people use it wrong or love that, <laughs> you know, they love it and they use it to own everybody. And I mean, just, I just have to, it's like your Pepe the Frog. It. It's, yeah, it's your Pepe the Frog. <laughs> but yeah, I was going to say, as far as that goes, you're way better off than Matt no, Fury sure. and you're way better off. No, it's fine. Than the, uh, 
than to let people. And you know, it's it's <laughs> it's um it's it's known weirdly. It's kind of known as the Matt Boars cartoon. Like people are always like, "Oh, you're you, oh. Do, you know you're doing the Matt Boars cartoon." So I get name recognition out of it. Uh, so that's good. But oh, um, because your name's in the corner, and that's the last yeah. panel, so they just see your name. <laughs> so that's, always you know, sign, always lucky. sign your work, uh, boys and girls. <laughs> sign it everywhere, every like panel. Jim Garrison. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> to, to answer the question, I did. We did include Mr. Gotcha uh, in Justice Warriors. Um, I think at the time I was, uh, it was like 2021. I quit political cartooning. I was definitely sick of seeing every day uh, people using this thing. So I was like, <laughs> well, we're going to kill them in Justice Warriors. <laughs> and, <laughs> like put an end to this nonsense. And uh, also, though, uh, you know, it, it also served as kind of a, a little uh, world building thing that we intend to do more with in the future, which is that he's a tune. He's like a tune, like in the way that Roger Rabbit has tunes. So like it's a comic book. So everybody's a cartoon, but they're like literal tunes in the world. They're like a species, you know, like if you cut them open, they'd have like weird fluids coming out of them or something. So uh, I kind of want to do something about the tunes. Uh, of kind the of alluded world. to that in the autopsy report, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Um, so last question I want to ask you guys, because I did say that I, I'm a big comics fan um, and just hearing Ben speak. Uh, ben, you have definitely read Grant Morrison's Super Gods. Yes? No, I haven't. Really? Holy <laughs> shit, bro. You got to read that I, I will. Good recommendation. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a it's it's great. So he talks about the history of comics and he talks about like it's about the history of comics, but all or they uh Great Morrison's they them, uh, and uh, 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 also talks about their own history with like hiking with uh, Garth Ennis and like uh, 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 like Panama or something. Like he, th there's just really crazy stories, and then also just like this is who Batman is or whatever. It's 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 an amazing book uh, that I I, I have I think I read twice in a row, like finished it and then read it again. Um, and uh, Grant Morrison is a special kind of maniac that uh, you don't see in every generation. So, uh, yeah, I, I just assumed. Matt, have you have you heard of this book? Read this yeah, book? I love uh, I love Morrison's work. I did read the book like whenever it came out. I don't even remember anymore. It's been a while. Uh, I Your don't whole remember. life's a blur. <laughs> I don't. I, I, it is. Uh, I mean, it's like pre pan It came out pre pandemic, so it could have come out in 2017 yes. or 2011. And I have post 9 11 pre pandemic zero idea when it came out. Uh, I read it. I didn't retain a lot from it, other than the impression that it was kind of like Grant Morrison just talking at you at a bar with all of his uh, his ideas, just like unloading on you. Like, well, you know, Wonder Woman is about this and uh, Batman is about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like I mean, I like that yeah. about it, especially there's a scene where they talk about um, the the Justice League comic cover from like 1992 after the death of Superman, where it's like a camera facing down and it's the new Justice League with like Guy Gardner and Wonder oh, yeah. Woman and Ice and um, that era. Um, and Grant Morrison talks about how like they always felt like that was a sort of dishonest depiction of superheroes, a person looking down at them. So when they got the opportunity to do JLA. They did it the opposite way. Oh, yeah. shit. Nope. Uh, where you look up at the uh, the figure so that they're like towering over you. I have the comic in my hand for those who are listening. Can you guys not <laughs> We lost me? you for like half a second. Oh, shit. No, I was just grabbing this off my... Uh, thing. Uh, but yeah, um, definitely a book recommendation. Ben, I would love to know what you think of it uh, if and when you Yeah, read I'll it. check it out. Um, yeah, so is there anything else you guys want to say about the comic? Anything else you want so to say? I, do, about I, the, I uh, have just a you, quick got... question. Oh, yeah. yeah just question curious. us. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys have a favorite right-wing comic book artist? Is there like somebody, mm. like, of course, Ben Garrison is like Ooh, a big one. good one. Everyone knows Ben Garrison. Is there like a, someone <sighs> that you have like on your radar that you just like check out their, their comics every once in a while? For like whatever reason, maybe it's just like so shitty, it's enjoyable to like read yeah, if not, not that's fine. I'm not sure. You know, I'm sure there's, I read a ton of comics. I'm sure there's some mainstream comics guys with uh, right wing views that I don't 
that I love, but I don't know, you know, they're not like outspoken. Yeah. So I'm trying to, you know, people who are like really outspoken, you know, like, uh, I mean, I don't even know who Ben Garrison, <laughs> of course rules, you know, I don't yeah. know. See, I was, I was trying to look up cause I, I, I have a friend that works at a comic book store and she showed me a comic book of, of someone who like, I, I forget exactly like his original comic, but it was just like a normal comic and he made like a killing and then he like, like a ton of money. And now he just does these like really shitty, like really awful, not funny right wing comics. And I, I try, I was trying to find his name, but, um, I, uh, yeah, I wasn't sure. Uh, well, you Matt, guys, what's that? You, cop you guys know why? I was just looking got. it up because I forget the name. Cop it's called comic? Thin Blue Line. <laughs> okay. And, uh, so I'm in. Yeah. So Hell I've yeah, been it as part of Justice Warriors writing <laughs> research. I have delved into cop movies, cop comics. Mm -hmm. I bought the full run of the uh, comics from like 1991. That's co it's called Cops, named after. Uh, uh, Central Organization of Police Specialists, Cops, the animated show that you had one season on in like 1989, um, which is a <laughs> is kind of a, a visual influence for Justice Warriors, actually. Uh, so I, I, in my process of buying all these cop comics, I bought this like kickstarted comic by <laughs> one of the original Punisher writers who's like a right wing guy. Of course. And it's called Thin Blue Line. And it also... Dan Lawless is, is the, the guy. Is, it is like... Um, in Justice Warriors, in a way, where it is a sort of a processing uh, 2020, although it is just straight up cops are holding together society <laughs> and like these like riotous, like Antifa black terrorists are tearing <laughs> apart society and these like he hero cops have to stop them. And you know, of course, they're like, you know, they're they're bound by. All sorts of restrictions like the law and oh like, yeah you know, so <laughs> humanity and, and, uh, so it's fun to read ironically yeah um, they're like the evil version of justice warriors yeah, it sounds yeah. like yeah no, it's, I mean, the it's opposite, like a, it's like the a opposite guy version just did literally justice he's like they're just there these are the justice warriors actually <laughs> did you did you read the other the other comic series they did private american uh, no but i we, uh, ben and i were talking about it cuz that one is it, it appears you know outright fascistic it's basically a yes uh, a punisher type vigilante although you know punisher and, i mean punisher's become a big right wing like the symbol is used but in the comics punisher is you know he's killing mafia guys and stuff it's sort of passable i think it's not it's not like outright um fascist whereas this is just he was like well what if the what's he called <laughs> what the if private it was American? worse <laughs> what if he's a vigilante yeah, what if he goes to the border and just I... <laughs> kills people like they, they open the border wall and then murder the people yeah you know all of the um the terrorists and rapists and drug dealers who come over and seek asylum what if he was just down there just <laughs> battling them. And yeah, it looks nuts. That is bonkers. Holy I fuck. actually think it got pulled. One of them, I think it was Private American, maybe, got taken down from uh, a Kickstarter because all sorts of people started being like, you know, there was like a little campaign against it and saying that this is hateful and everything. And so Kickstarter uh, deplatformed him. And then, of course, he went nuts and he said uh, you know i've been canceled and i think he tried <laughs> to he, quadruple the money he was yeah. getting oh, yeah. he, he went on he went on fox and friends also to promote his new kickstarter oh. uh, i think probably helped Jesus. as well um yeah, the I grift is real the i need, right. a, so I need on this grift we I, we've said before being <laughs> a right wing grifter is so easy it's such like it's so easy money Ben, I think you could. I think you could easily trick Chuck Dixon into working. <laughs> yeah, with you guys. I think that uh, he's there for the. Take I'm going to put that on my sure. whiteboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just have him read the outline of Justice Warriors. It's and then he'll just be like, yeah, this is true. Like the cops are killing. You know, it'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> I still really want to. I really want to hear like a right winger read Justice Warriors. Yeah, because I don't Ooh. know if like if if there will be like an ironic filter or like how much left wing people are like haha of course the joke is so obvious but like people like robocop on yeah. face value people like starship <laughs> troopers Sean famously we yeah. have 
Ben and I have talked about trying to get on a cop podcast. <laughs> and please keep oh, trying. Please, please, please keep trying. You could. Yeah. You a hundred. <laughs> you think we could do it? One uh, yeah, I'll get, get, get the right one. Have you have you guys have you guys ever watched uh the not even a show, which is a YouTube channel? It's like a left wing prank phone call guy. He he manages to get like congressional candidates all kinds of fucking famous he's, people to come on he's his, called like he, to come on made up shows that he makes up that he's he's like yeah my name is john whatever he makes up a name he's he says, so i'm good. the host of so and so and we'll get these people to come on and then humiliate them and then have their people afterward be like oh God. i don't understand what the fuck this is supposed to be like what's this supposed to be a joke what's going on here it's yeah, but so sebastian gorka has gone on more than yeah. once <laughs> well, that's, a, that's a power move actually that's just like just flex on. it on gorka that's a that's a chris james yeah, from the shout guys out podcast to chris james and, uh, yeah genuinely hilarious man I, i'm sure there's a pop a, a cop podcast ecosystem because cops have to have something to listen yes. to when they're not when they're getting uh, fast when food, they're not yeah. beating their wives <laughs> the when they're in the driveway when they're parked in front of a yeah. playground <laughs> i gotta be honest my 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 most toxic trait i'd say this is my biggest red flag as a personality trait is if i'm <laughs> scrolling through tiktok I occasionally get cops sitting in their cop cars doing TikTok lives and answering questions. And my most toxic trait is that I will go into the chat and spam fuck 12 and <laughs> smells like bacon until they end. <laughs> it's just like, I, it's a compulsion. I can't control myself. <laughs> and I think because I spend so much time in their chats, I get recommended a lot more. Oh yeah. You're feeding, into the, you're, you're feeding the algorithm. <laughs> my brother in Christ. <laughs> yeah. The cops do the, uh, the cops do the like the NPC uh, live stream stuff. No, no, <laughs> no. Oh, oh my god! god. If what seems wants to be the problem? Police, police involved shooting. <laughs> bang bang! No, not warrant. No, not warrant. <laughs> he was no angel. He was no angel. <laughs> no. <laughs> Qual Fuck. Qualified immunity. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god all right that's the next yeah. grift. we we just we just crafted a grift yeah western nowhere, kabuki no longer thing. we're done here we're going all in on the cop <laughs> the cop npc we're on cops now. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing an animated uh npc cop live stream thing for a theoretical volume two of justice warriors to promote it we oh, that's to. a great we idea. We have that's a fantastic a idea. idea. <laughs> Please do you it. it here first, folks. You'll see Alex in Ooh, the comments. Like do a VTuber, a VTuber yeah, thing I have as the like tools. officer shit, and then just I can do that one hundred percent. No, you look astonished right now. There you go. Yeah, this is this how it works. We just <laughs> we were on. looking for something for the next one. <laughs> yeah, that oh, rocks. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much, guys. Really appreciate it. If you were listening to this, please buy Justice Warriors. It's available for pre-order. Um, thank you to Matt. Thank you to Ben. Um, where can the good people find you, Matt and Ben? Uh, you can find me in a Simon and Schuster link, hopefully, that you guys could post in a show notes <laughs> of some sort. <laughs> yes. Uh, in fact, uh, Justice Warriors is no longer available. We, we're back for full purchase. The book was actually out of print uh, due to massive demand. Uh, we're almost through our second printing. Uh, it's very oh, close to great. going to a third oh, wow. printing now. Nice. Um, so get it while you can, because it's it's going fast. Uh, and you can find me on X, the everything app, uh, <laughs> at Ben Clarkson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, doing financial transactions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Swapping swapping coins. Job applications. Really, yeah. well, really yeah. wondering if I ever like if I just just switch over and start saying X. No, it's just, no, just, I'm gonna, so, just so hard. I get big laughs, laughs when I do it. <laughs> <laughs> but see, now I understand why why transphobes dead name dead naming tw X as they Twitter. It. It, it just hits. It always yeah. hits. Yeah. People <laughs> love. I love dead naming it. Well, and it's very, you know, I mean, it, it works for uh, Elon Musk, who basically bought the platform because his daughter uh, is trans. And yeah. he, he, you know, thought she succumbed. And he admitted that. Yeah, and he that's said what that I'm, I mean, out loud. And he thought that was word. fine to it's, say. It, it was kind of speculation, <laughs> but it, it was, I thought it was like kind of a joke. But 
Um, but no, he just he said my daughter got hit with the woke mind virus, and so I hit up Saudi Arabia <laughs> for twenty billion dollars. Baby, to try to yeah. Like- yeah. When he says when he <laughs> says the woke mind virus, it's not like a metaphor. He like thinks it's a real like yeah. thing. He thinks it's a physical. He's looking into. What a way to prove your daughter completely and totally correct. By the way, she's like, (laughs) "I hate rich people. You're all evil." He's like, "I'm actually going to buy Twitter and make the world an objectively worse place because I can to prove you right and Uh, and get involved in geopolitics of two warring nations." Apparently, yeah. I'm so I'm so online that when Ian Miles Chung says to shut off Starlink, I just do it. (laughs) Because it's because it's funny and I get a few faves for it. I. I mean, <laughs> and this no is why people shouldn't be billionaires because no one should should have Nobody this power. Should of course, ever but be it's able like to if do I that. did, if I yeah. had the power, I would be like, I would be fucking shit up. I would just be doing it from the left. Like I would be, like yeah. I would be a main. I would be arrested and killed. That's sort of, like Uncle yeah. George Soros. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey Matt, where can we find you um, on on the internet? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, on X, correct? On X. On I'm X. on. I am like Matt <laughs> Moore's on basically all the apps. I'm pretty easy to find. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, thanks again, guys. And you did, I did say before we we're going to uh before we're gonna sign off here. Um, I did have I wrote a little something and I just wanted to read very quickly. Um uh I, I wrote I wrote this and 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 I just want to uh 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 pay pay proper respects. This is called a song you know by heart. Um there were places that exist in the heart. Paris and paradise each have their own juicy fruits, a nostalgic rage turns us to pirates in our minds and looking forward we see our lives full of longing and dreams behind we see our fake ids and cold nights where a drink was the only thing to keep us warm but you were there and you shared this longing with us thinking of saints somewhere and facial hair and the spanish civil war and where do we go now the ground moves underneath and we like the molten rock of the earth feel soft you wanted to go places you wanted to change location and thought it might alter your demeanor But the sand and toes is just an hourglass that is slipping away. The places we dream of... (laughs) Fuck. (laughs) The (laughs) The places we dream of won't ever be there. Yet we do dare to dream. Because we don't know what else to do. We could get drunk and screw. We could make ourselves bait for the nighttime sharks. Or we could simply waste away. And honestly, we should all be so lucky. Rest in peace, Jimmy Buffett. (laughs) Damn. I cried when I wrote it too, and I was really. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> we will. Kisses. Mwah, yeah, thank mwah. you for coming on. This was fun. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. Thanks, guys. See you guys. All right, that's it for the main feed, but we have an entire another episode on the Patreon featuring Christy Yamaguchi Main, aka Will from the Jort Center podcast. We talk about, you know, what's going on on the internet, um, the gay Obama conspiracy that Tucker Carlson's promoting, a bunch of other fun stuff. Uh, you can check that out at patreon.com slash Western Kabuki. Thanks so much. <laughs>